Hi, I'm Liz and I'm an artist educator here at Maitland Regional Art Gallery. And today we're going to be looking at a collection work and then making an artwork inspired by the work. Now the work is here, it's by Peter Pinson and it's called Still Life Approaching Cloud. And as you can see, it's a really vibrant image. It's made with gouache and it has a lot of interesting shapes and colours in it. How would you describe the mood of this painting? What kind of liquid do you think is in the cup and in the bottle? Can you see some similar shapes in the room that you're in? Do the edges of the shapes look hard or soft? What colour stands out to you the most? What shape stands out the most? And do you like the work? Why and why not? So today we're going to be making an artwork using items from around the house. So I've got a collection of things here. I've got a teapot, a key, a fork, a tea bag, some glasses, a banana. So have a look around you and just see what interesting items that you've got. Have a look for shapes that you might like, that you might like to incorporate into your still life artwork. We're going to be using pastels and pencils or you can just use coloured pencils. I've got both oil as well as soft. Also, you'll need a piece of white paper. So we'll be creating an abstract still life using lots of bright colours. You're going to choose your first object. So I'm going to choose a fork and just placing it on your page, holding it with one hand and just gently tracing around the outside. And then you'll choose your next item, pop it on your page and do the same thing. So you're just gently tracing around each object. Remembering it doesn't have to be perfect. Once your page starts to get a bit fuller, you want your lines to overlap. So you'll start to place the objects on top of the lines that you've already drawn. You can play around with your compositions. So finding nice spots for each object to sit in that you feel happy with. And then you can go back to reusing the same objects. So I've already used my banana once, but I really like the shape of it. So I'm going to use it again. So once you're happy with your composition and your page is nice and full, you might like to gently trace around the edges of your objects, changing direction every time one line meets another.
then we can start adding some color. So as you can see, you've created multiple different shapes by tracing your objects and then created new shapes by the overlapping lines. So what I want you to do is start to color in the spaces that you've left with the objects. So as you can see here, the banana and the key overlap. I'm going to color in that spot that is encased by the banana. And then I'll color the rest of the key a different color. And then I'll choose a different color for the banana. I might go with a pink. So a nice challenge with this artwork is to see whether you can avoid making two touching shapes the same color. Once you've finished colouring in all your different shapes, spend a bit of time having a really good look at your artwork. What kind of interesting new shapes did you create? Can you recognise any of the objects that you use now that they're split up by colour? I can see my banana here, the key, I can just make out this teapot, and the wheel of masking tape really stands out. Have a look at which kind of colour combinations you like best. I like the way that this yellow sits really nicely next to the purple. And also, have a think about what kind of name you'd like to give your artwork. I might call my artwork Rainbow Fork, because the fork has the most colours in it. I hope you've enjoyed your art making session today, being inspired by Peter Pinson's work, Still Life Approaching Cloud, and creating your own still life artwork using objects, colour, pattern and a little bit of imagination.